When you hear the words Five Nights at Freddy's, what exactly comes to mind? Is it the memes, which have dominated the internet ever since the game's creation? Is it the lore, that's not only had the same impact on the internet, but has been the nightmare of theorists everywhere? Or maybe it's the community, a mix of some of the internet's most creative musicians, animators, cosplayers, artists and creators. Nah! <laughs> It's most likely the two most recent additions to the franchise, the FNAF movie by Blumhouse and the VR game Help Wanted by Steel Wool Studios, both of which spearheaded by the franchise's creator, Mr. Scott Cawthon. Also a Roblox game, but we don't talk about that. Maybe in a future video. Anyway, if you know anything about FNAF, willingly or not, you will know that there are many unsolved secrets. Obviously, some of the most popular mysteries of the franchise have already been solved, like the identity of the puppet, who we play as in each game, and is Roxanne Wolf breathable? The answer, yes, but it's very painful. My sausage will never recover. Out of every character in the franchise, there have been three characters shrouded in the most mystery. Some solved and some still not. Purple Guy? Shadow Freddy, and the FNAF tuber thumbnail tyrant themselves, Golden Freddy. Now, yes, a lot of mysteries with Purple Guy and Golden Freddy have been solved either by game or book. One is the once beloved owner of a thriving animatronic pizzeria restaurant turned psychotic zombie mascot with an obsession with immortality, and the other is an omnipotent palette swap of the main mascot with godlike abilities being co-piloted by a vengeful spirit and Purple Guy's child. Now, if you think that's confusing, just wait until you hear about the Mimic, or Fazgo, or Mappa X Springtrap Empreg fanfiction. No, that's not something from my browser history, not yet at least. It's something that happens in one of the short stories within the Fazbear Frights book series. I swear all of the weird stuff in FNAF really needs to get a video of its own. For now, we're going to throw Daddy Afton in the bin and focus on the two aforementioned Freddies. Don't worry, Willie. I'll get to you eventually. Right now, I'm going to focus on your son, a child you shouldn't have killed, and your possible friend, according to the FNAF wiki. Seriously, there's not a lot of stuff known about Shadow Freddy, and they were practically forgotten until their recent inclusion into the FNAF movie and rumoured role in the sequel. In this video, I'm going to go through the history of these two mysterious fuzzy bears as best as I can, using the wiki, research, and my own general knowledge. And if you think that last part isn't good enough, it's my video, so shut the fuck up. Anyway, on to the pissing grimace bears. Let's wind the clock back all the way to 2014. The Scottish referendum happened, Gangnam Style had reached 2 billion views on YouTube, and something about an epidemic. However, in August 8th of that year, we were blessed with a game that would change the internet, our childhoods, and Matt Pat's mental state forever. No wonder he's leaving the channels. There's only so much animatronic feat that a single person can handle. Five Nights at Freddy's released on Dejura, and 12 days later was released on Steam to very little fame until a certain YouTuber played it and launched it into the stratosphere. That's right, Yami Mash! Oh, and also... Daddy! Uh, yeah, this guy, Markiplier. Who, fun fact, was the person to come up with the name for Golden Freddy, because according to the game files, his name was originally Yellow Bear. Which, even further fact, would make sense since in the FNAF movie, Springtrap is only referred to as Yellow Rabbit. So it makes sense then if they were a team. Ever since Golden Freddy was discovered, you couldn't go five minutes without seeing his face in a thumbnail. From theory videos and fan animations, to gameplay videos and... songs. Ugh. This literal golden boy had practically became FNAF's mascot, Right next to Mr. Ohalero Shito Freddy Fazbear himself. Arr, 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 arr. 
Now, Golden Freddy wasn't like other animatronics. He knew how to have fun, had a quirky personality, and was literally a ghost who could face through doors, cause hallucinations, and even crash your game if you get jump scared by him. But wait, there's more! After an update to the game, if you input the numbers 1987 into the levels for Custom Night Mode, you'll instantly get jump scared by Golden Freddy. What does this mean? Well, it's a callback to the commonly known date. Now that's all for FNAF 1. Let's tackle FNAF 0.5. Get it? Because it's a prequel? Okay. Um, anyway, FNAF 2 released on November 10th, 2014, only three months and two days after the release of the first game. Now, this game is the community's most beloved game and includes the grand return of Golden Freddy, who the community has named... Withered Golden Freddy! Ah, oh, hey! It's me! In a doco video. That means we're like best friends now. Anyway, enough about how awesome I am, let's get back to the video. FNAF 2 is a very lore heavy game. From the post-death minigames, the suddenly alive phone guy, and the 1987 paycheck you get at the very end of the game. That's not all though, we are introduced to one very important character and the other half of this video, Shadow Bonnie, otherwise known as Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, I'm not even gonna attempt that. Uh, we're, we're, we're also introduced to Shadow Freddy, who is, no joke, just a palette swap of... Withered Golden Freddy! Thanks, man. Hopefully our monthly top golf session is still happening. Since Shadow Freddy does absolutely nothing but lean against a wall, let's skip to the real FNAF 2, because it takes place after FNAF 1. FNAF 3 same with FNAF 2, is different from the previous game. This one being more horror based, if the fact that it takes place at a horror attraction didn't make that obvious. Also the fact that you're being haunted by the man behind the slaughter in his immortal robot fursuit while being haunted by robot spectres. Ooh, spooky scary ghost. One of them is Jack Septicai for some reason. I grew up in Dublin. I was a potato farmer. Every night I would go to the pub. I would drink ale and dance jigs. But then one day, I met a pretty lass. Her name was Ruby and she- Irish ghosts. Now I know that this might be difficult to believe, but Golden Freddy technically isn't in the third game. Except he saw it. Is, but not as Golden Freddy. Look, I know it's confusing, but we'll talk about it later. I don't need the mentality of a professional theorist, especially when I can take things at face value, such as Golden Freddy being in the FNAF 3 bad ending, or Shadow Freddy luring us to our demise as we die in fire. I'm not at all sorry for that. Christmas album coming soon, Eurovision entry coming after that, Super Bowl performance as well, fuck you. Why did I write that? Now, along with Shadow Freddy being a sneaky little sausage and bringing the animatronics to Shaggy so he could wreck them for reasons that haven't been proven yet. Now, just before we leave FNAF 3, here's a little bit of trivia. If you look outside of the office, you'll see a Freddy head and torso. Apparently, that's Shadow Freddy, according to the wiki. Time for FNAF 4! There's gotta be a lot of appearances from these two bears, especially since it takes place in the most important place in the entire franchise, Fredbear's Family Diner. Now, let's see. Uh, um, it's... It's, uh... The bears... Oh! There! That counts! It's Fredbear's shadow. No? Uh... Nightmare? I mean, he's a shadow Fredbear with ghost-like capabilities and he crashes your game when jump-scared. So... 
I, I, I guess it counts as a mix. M maybe they just fucked in Made Nightmare. I don't know anymore. Oh, and also we kind of find out the identity of Golden Freddy. Because, spoiler alert, the crying child dies in Fredbear. And Fredbear is a yellow bear. So people think that the crying child is part of Golden Freddy. Yes, I said part of. If you shut the fuck up, I'll explain it when we get to UCN. Sister Location, a bad FNAF game according to the funny purple dog guy, has only one appearance of a Golden Freddy, and it might not even be canon because the only way you'll see it is either the custom night or by being a rebel and not listening to the robot possessed by your dead sister who's trying to lure you into a giant spoon room so she and her dead child friends can empty your insides and use your skin like a meat suit. Uh, what the fuck am I doing in my life? This this script for the video is longer than Queso's fucking shopping list. Uh, Pizzeria Simulator has nothing about the two mystery bears. All it has is tycoon f mechanics, bankruptcy, Tiny bear abuse, many mysteries finally getting solved, and an upsetting ending with an iconic monologue where everyone burns and dies. That's the ending to the franchise. Absolutely nothing of significance happens after that. Except for a spin-off where you can control nearly every animatronic to your liking. Watch silly little cutscenes. Find out about the canonical identity of Golden Freddy as the one you should not have killed, aka Cassidy, and sit through a bunch of stories from Barney the Dinosaur with dementia. All of this being a hell like purgatory for the purple guy, created by Golden Freddy in order to make him suffer. And it works! Nothing goes wrong at all. Oh, fuck's sake. Since that's the ending of any appearances from these two in the main games, and the only appearances except for the movie is in spin-off mobile games and books, I'm just not going to waste any time and skip straight to the movie. Because if I go through every single appearance throughout the entire franchise, I'm going to recreate the purple guy activities of my local M&Ds. We don't have Chuck E. Cheese in Scotland! Shut the fuck up! The FNAF movie! Unironically, one of my favourite movies. Not because it's about FNAF or that I've gotten some internet attention from recreating FNAF jump scares. It's because I genuinely think the stories and characters are good, and I can't wait for the second and third movie. I don't think it's going to make as much money as the first movie because the critics might try to shit all over it and it can't possibly live up to the fans' expectations, but I think it could make around a good few million. But that's only if they don't instantly release it on streaming. I mean, who would do that? That sounds absolutely fucking dumb. <laughs> if you've seen anything about this movie, including the actual movie, you will see that Golden Freddy plays a massive part in the film, even being the technical main antagonist because he, spoiler alert, tricks the main character into giving up his little sister in order to stay in the magical dreamland where nothing bad happens and his kidnapped brother is still alive. J just don't think about it too much, please. It it's an eternity in here. Let's just focus on the cameos! Look, it's Cory Kenshin! Wow, this employee of the month board has 8-bit gaming, Razbowski, Fusion Z Gamer, and my best friend in the entire universe, Doko! Fantastic! Couldn't have said it better, mate. Now give me 50 grand. Ah! Oh, and also, Matt Pat's here as well, I guess. But that's just a fact. Yeah. Now here is where we get to a very important part of the movie. If you've seen the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the fort building scene! 
Oh, shit. Yeah, this is totally a kid's movie. Yes, I know the gore isn't on screen, but look at this. Max's upper body inside of Grimace. The blood and guts isn't shown, but it's extremely implied and kids aren't fucking stupid. <laughs> hey, what are you doing on the computer, Adam? No, I'm playing Roblox with my new Roblox crush. Wait, let me see. Is that Pomni? Never mind. Anyway, this shows that Max is dead, is in an animatronic, and there's a blink and you'll miss a shot of Shadow Freddy in the cameras. Also, the actress for Max, Cat Connor Sterling, has teased her return in the sequel, so it's all but confirmed at this point. And we finally reached the end. I've checked the wiki, and it says nothing about Help Wanted 2. So as of right now, that is everything. Unless... Unless maybe you want me to go through the book. Nope! Nope, you can fuck off. There's 32 of the fucking things. I'm not going through each and every single one of them. Well, at least until the next video. I hope you all enjoyed this. It took me a really long time to make this, and I'm going to start making a lot more videos like these. So please like, subscribe, click the bell, and share this video with the people that you think would enjoy it. Or else... I'll find you.